Family members confined in their cells for 23 hours a day in Bikies only prisons where they would be refused access to gym facilities and television. The new laws that are being introduced into the parliament today won't go through the usual review processes. Civil libertarians say it's manic policy making reminiscent of the Bjorki Peterson era. In Brisbane, Stephanie Smale reports. Under the Queensland government's plan, all of the state's bikey criminals will be locked up in a jail north of Brisbane. They'll only be allowed out of their cells for one hour a day. The new laws state outlaw motorcycle gang members convicted of any jailable offence will be sent to the facility. Visitor contact for inmates will be restricted to one hour a week. Phone calls will be monitored and their mail will be opened and censored. Terry O'Gorman from the Australian Council for Civil Liberties says the laws are being rushed through without adequate consultation. This is shock and awe tactics by the Queensland Government. It is manic policy making where both the Attorney General and the Premier have outrightly refused to consult with anyone except the police about these proposals. The Attorney General, Jared Blaze, says police and prosecutors will have to prove a person is a member of an outlaw motorcycle gang for them to be placed in a new prison. He says the tough new measures aim to stop the outlaw gangs using prisons to recruit new members and develop business opportunities. In Queensland, legislation is usually assessed by a parliamentary committee in place of an upper house review. Terry O'Gorman isn't happy that process is being ignored this time. Our concern is that this is a return, pure and simple, to the Bielke Peterson era where you introduce legislation, you refuse to consult with anyone but the police, and the Premier proudly announced the other day that the only parliamentary check and balance which was introduced as a result of the Fitzgerald report, namely this sort of law has to go to a parliamentary committee for investigation report, that's going to be bypassed. It hasn't given any reason other than the fact that I can because I have a thumping majority and I have no upper house to control me. Debbie Kilroy from the prisoner support group Sisters Inside sees the new prison system as the equivalent of solitary confinement. People can get quite angry, they're obviously isolated, they can develop mental health issues. So we're going to see angry young men coming out of prison and maybe then undertake serious re-offending um, because of the effects of solitary confinement in the prison system. The new bikies only prison is the latest measure in the Queensland government's war on outlaw motorcycle gangs. There are also plans to destroy the motorcycles of convicted bikey criminals and deny any member of an outlaw motorcycle gang bail, regardless of the offence. The Queensland Police Service has thrown its support behind the new laws. Brett Pointing is the Deputy Police Commissioner. If you look at the Queensland landscape, we see criminal motorcycle gangs highly active in the uh, production and distribution of uh, uh, methamphetamine and uh, all drugs. And of course that's what a lot of the turf wars have been about. You know, we're seeing um, uh, members of criminal motorcycle gangs engaged in trafficking in firearms. Those firearms uh, end up in the hands of dangerous criminals. You know, this is a, this is a very much a turning point, I think, for in Queensland. Uh, we either lay down and we allow it to happen, or we do something about it. And I'm, as a police officer, I'm proud that we're standing up and trying to do something about it. The Queensland government's war on outlaw motorcycle gangs started after a vicious bikey brawl on the Gold Coast two weeks ago. Police are still trying to track down many of those involved. Terry O'Gorman acknowledges criminal bikey activity needs to be stamped out, but he's urging the state government to focus on increasing police numbers and resources. The current legislation is more than adequate, and to the extent that individuals within bike groups are committing criminal offences, telephone taps, listening devices, unexplained wealth laws, a whole array of state federal laws are available. The Deputy Commissioner, Brett Pointing, says the new approach is necessary. Clubs are actively recruiting at the moment at an alarming rate. Uh, the rebels in Queensland have over 300 members. The uh, banditos have over 200 members. So we are seeing uh, the makeup of these clubs change to uh, younger. The leadership of these clubs are, are younger, more aggressive, certainly more territorial. We're seeing a lot of this um, very, very violent gang activity spilling out onto the streets, spilling out into public places, and it's, uh, you know, it terrifies the public. The new anti-bikey laws could be passed through the Queensland Parliament as early as tonight. Stephanie Smale in Brisbane. Well, <clears throat> there you go. It gets worse.
it gets worse. Okay, so they've upped the ante to the stage that they now want to put anybody who's a member of what they deem to be an outlaw motorcycle gang, which means that it's a bunch of people hanging around to talk motorcycles to join a club structure that's got a rigid top-down disciplinarian style of a hierarchy, probably because they didn't get enough you know, daddy cuddles when they were supposed to be being breastfed or you know, maybe they come from one of the many Brady bunches that litter the suburbs and they couldn't get it together to go to Boy Scouts or Cubs or something. For some reason they crave platoon level infantry structure so they dress themselves up in their own little uniforms. If you're part of such a club and some of the members of the club are engaging in criminal activity then the Queensland Government at the behest of the police with no oversight or review by anybody who's otherwise educated and knows what they're talking about in these matters has decided that these people are going to be treated as if they are like not only guilty but the world's worst demons let loose on society. Some quote outlaw unquote motorcycle club members break the law so therefore all members of the club are declared to be outlaws and treated as if they're guilty like no bail and if they're found guilty of anything that gets you put in jail any indictable offence then they automatically go to this supermax prison where they're kept in solitary confinement 23 hours a day and denied gym facilities and basically being treated as if they're you know, the most dangerous prisoners in the world and why is it so? Because they want to ride motorcycles and wear a denim jacket over the top of a leather jacket with an embroidered patch on it. There's a convention in sociological and philosophical debating circles, polite convention, known as Godwin's Law. Now Godwin was somebody who said that Nobody is ever allowed to introduce the topic of Nazism into any debate in polite society on pain of losing the argument immediately. So that's why Terry O'Gorman was talking about uh, manic, knee-jerk reactions. He didn't go so far as to say this is fascist totalitarian police state dictatorship type legislature because under Godwin's law he would be deemed to have lost the argument right and it's really funny that the right-wing control freak segment of society is such staunch adherence to the Godwin's Law principle. Oh, you can't say anything's like the Nazis, especially if it is like the Nazis, because then you'll lose the argument. You have to find some other way of, of finding fault with the position. I would say bullshit. You know, the last time you got populist governments demonising an insignificant, harmless fragment of society in order to divert public attention away from the reality of the situation yeah you got Adolf Hitler in charge of Germany all right well Campbell Newman's already in charge of Queensland and Tony Abbott's in charge of Australia and the liberal state governments have been outbidding the Labor state governments for 15 or 20 years to try and demonize motorcycle gang members it is absolutely patently fucking ridiculous it makes a person ashamed to be Australian it really does when the politicians carry on like that I mean 
somebody is distributing methamphetamines to the community, right? They're doing that because there is a demand within the community. The demand for methamphetamines has been created by people who suppressed cannabis and initially opened the floodgates to heroin and then suppressed it after most of the heroin addicts had died off. The quantities of methamphetamines that get mentioned in the news indicate that somebody is importing, you know, bulk. I would personally suspect that the involvement of the motorcycle gangs is at the courier distribution level. That would be my suspicion. There'll be some really, really rich business man probably living overseas who's got a large chunk of the market in each Australian city and there'll be you know three or four of these business men and they will have carved up the Australian market years ago. The motorcycle gangs that's like you know harassing the pizza delivery boy. Might be wearing a uniform with a sign on him that says he's a pizza delivery boy but you know he can't change the pizza that he's got in the hand, you know. He's, he's got no power in the situation. They're scapegoats. They're scapegoats for the fact that the economy is going down the gurgle hole. And somebody has to be blamed for the lack of tourists and lack of customers going to the Gold Coast. And they're going to blame the bloody motorcycle gangs. I'm disgusted. I can't think of anything to do about it but make YouTube movies and, you know, raise public awareness to the duplicity involved in these politicians and police. I mean, it's, if nothing else, it proves that it is not possible to remain employed in the insecurity alleged industry unless one is fundamentally psychiatrically insecure. Like, if these police honestly believe what they're saying, then they really need, you know, ongoing psychotherapy. They need ongoing psychotherapy. They have become lost in the oxymoronic labyrinthine confines of military intelligence where any potential threat must be considered as a real threat and actual countermeasures must be taken against the potential threat. All right? So, for example, if you see a snake and the snake is capable of biting somebody and the person would die from the bite, then when you see the snake, you must assume the snake is attempting to bite you. That is a classic piece of military intelligence. So a police officer sees a motorcyclist and thinks, oh, that motorcyclist might stand up to me, might argue with me, might fight with me, might win the fight, you know. Therefore, on site, the motorcyclist is assumed to be planning all that. Yet if the motorcyclist sees a police officer strutting down the street dressed up like a fucking parrot with all these colour patches showing how brave they are, wearing a bulletproof jacket with a 16-shot semi-automatic sidearm and a can of capsicane and a collapsible baton and some handcuffs and a taser and a radio link to a base, you know, to organise backup, being very brave going to buy a jug of milk for morning tea. If the motorcyclist looks at the cop and thinks, holy shit, that prick could shoot me in the back while I'm running away and, and cobble up some bullshit paperwork afterwards, I better treat him with suspicion, then the motorcyclist is considered to be a paranoid, psychotic, wicked, evil, dangerous parasite on the face of society and the cop who's lining up for his fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year for running around standing over people with a gun on his hip, he's considered to be a pillar of society. The politicians and the fuckwits who voted for these politicians, they astound me and they worry the shit out of me every time I go to town to buy a loaf of bread. They are utterly in the grip of a Hollywood television cop drama led fantasy. They're not living in the real fucking world. And they're looking for scapegoats. It's a fucking worry, I tell you. It really, it's a worry. It's enough to make a pacifist, vegetarian, tree hugging greenie have a beer in the middle of the day. And make two movies in two days. On the same topic. And to be honest, I've never owned a motorcycle. 
I've never been a member of a motorcycle gang. My experience with motorcycle gangs began when I was a petroleum transfer engineer at the age of about 16, pulling petrol at the local service station. That's the fancy way of putting it, petroleum transfer engineer. And uh, a bunch of motorcyclists, maybe 20 or 30 of them, tooled into the place, pulled up for a hamburger and fill the petrol and they all had jackets on them and at this distance of time I couldn't tell you what their particular gang was. I wasn't paying that much attention, you know, like they were just motorcyclists and they all had patches on. They weren't Hells Angels but they were, I don't think they were banditos either. But anyway, coffin cheaters, grave diggers, some bloody thing. Um, and I went over and was talking to them and I was you know, interested in the possibility of ultralights back then so I was looking at their engines for you know how you could put it onto an aeroplane and because I wasn't acting scared of them they didn't seem to think I should act like I was scared of them and you know we had good time five minute chat they got on their bikes you know went and did a few stunts up and down the road and then got on with their, their holiday I've never understood why anybody is scared of people on motorcycles you know, just because there happens to be 15 or 20 of them, or, you know, maybe they are all wearing colours. It's, it's a paranoid, hysterical, fear-driven reaction conditioned by Hollywood. You know, they're just people. They're just people. You know? That's all. And if some of those people are criminals, well, OK. Chase the criminals. Don't harass all of the people. Let's face it, in Victoria, somewhere between 1 in 13 and 1 in 19, Catholic priest is a pedophile. Does that mean that they should outlaw Catholic priests? Maybe outlaw the whole Catholic Church because it harbours a few pedophile priests, you know, like between 1 in 13 and 1 in 19. What if there's somebody in a football team who has a criminal record? Does that mean the football team should be outlawed because he might hang around with his mates and convince them to stand up against the cops on a dark Saturday night when there's 15 footballers and only two cops? See, what's going on is the cops are looking at society and they are horribleizing. They are pessimistically turning over in their mind all of the things that other people could possibly do to them and they are reacting as if those things are in fact happening. A week or a fortnight ago when the Queensland Premier started announcing that he was going to do something ridiculous legislatively, about eight hours after he announced that, they announced that they were going to put riot control armour-plated cops out front of all the cop shops and half of the politicians' houses because they were afraid the bikies might retaliate. It's like they know what arseholes they're being to the bikies and they know what they would do to the bikies if the bikies did that to them, and they're fighting phantoms in their own mind. The cops and the politicians, absolute feedback loop of paranoia and self-righteousness and entitlement and elitism. And it's gonna end badly. I can see it ending badly. And there's nothing I can do but sit on me little bloody hilltop and yell, STOP! You're going the wrong fucking way, you dickheads! The purpose of a police force in a polite democratic society is to react after crime has happened by detecting and arresting the alleged perpetrators. What's going on in Australia at the moment is that the police forces used to be services, now they call themselves forces. The police forces are fantasising that they can act preemptively to lock up anybody they think might be capable of committing a crime. Right? They're not responding to crime, they're trying to preempt it by locking up anyone who they think is capable of committing a crime. It's insane. It's unconstitutional, it's anti-democratic, it's inhumane, it's a totalitarian fascist fantasy. And I hope they wake up to themselves and stop. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.